A successful strategy will help a company to create economic value, capture that value, and sustain it over time. But how do you know if a strategy is working? Well, first thing we know, strategy without numbers is poetry. Uh, and when it comes to answering the question of how well a company is performing, it is a no poetry zone. So we need to turn to the numbers. But which numbers? So when you're measuring performance, a couple of things that you want to bear in mind, a couple of questions you want to answer. First of all, which metrics are appropriate? So if you're in an asset intensive industry like auto uh, production or cruise lines, you'll want to take into account uh, measures like return on invested capital, return on assets. They give you some sense of how much profitability a company is generating based on the investment in, uh, in capital, uh, you know, ships or, or auto factories that they're making. If, on the other hand, you're in a subscription-based uh, business like Netflix, you might be more interested in looking at the cost to acquire a customer versus the lifetime value of a customer. So the appropriate metrics are going to vary by industry and uh, by company. Then you want to ask, compared to what benchmarks, right? So uh, performance uh, metrics in isolation don't tell you much. You need to compare them to something. Maybe it's relative to the past. Is the company doing better on cash flow? The, you know, think of the Tesla case, for instance, than it had in the uh, past. Compared to targets, so the company set some targets. How is the performance doing against those targets? Uh, against uh, close competitors. So in the case of Carnival, you might look at Royal Caribbean, since they're such uh, similar companies, against the industry as a whole. So you need to think a little bit about what are the appropriate benchmarks against which we compare uh, the metrics of performance to contextualize and to understand how well a company is doing. Uh, then you need to think a little bit over uh, what time period is appropriate. So if you're looking at historical data, you might think, oh, the more the merrier, the better, uh, the longer the time series we have, uh, the better our analysis. Well, maybe, but if there's some big change or disruption that happened a few years ago that renders some of the earlier data less relevant, you probably want to exclude that data. So you need to think, what, uh, think a little bit about what is the appropriate time period over which you want to assess performance. And then finally, and, and very importantly, what's the quality of the available data? Um, so, uh, you know, data quality varies a lot and, you know, we live in a world awash with data, but not all of that data is good data. So, um, you know, if you're looking at, for instance, publicly reported uh, data for a publicly traded company and, you know, the 10K, pretty credible data. If you're looking at some consulting firm's estimates of something and you don't know about the consulting firm, you don't know how they did the estimates, less reliable data. So uh, it's, it's very important to uh, take that into account, the quality of the data, when you're thinking about uh, how you're going to measure performance. So once you've uh, decided on some metrics and some benchmarks, a very useful, simple, intuitive, useful way to uh, present the, uh, your assessment of how a company is doing is something we'll uh, call the performance box score. And again, super simple. What we're doing is we're just looking at a set of performance measures, in this case, revenue growth, cumulative EBITDA. Cumulative EBITDA. Uh, we're specifying over what time period. Again, so we're, you know, we're clear and explicit about what the uh, time horizon, what the time series is that we're looking at. Uh, then we're showing how our focal firm, in this case, Carnival, is doing on each measure and then comparing it to in this case, the benchmark is Royal Caribbean. Uh, and we've just used green to denote which company is doing better on any measure to make it again very uh, visually uh, um, e easy to interpret visually. And then it's also useful to include the data source. Uh, one, to remember where you got the data from. Uh, two, if other people want to dig in deeper, they know where to look. And three, it's a useful reminder uh, of, uh, by reminding yourself where the data came from, it can help you to calibrate how confident you are in the data, and it can help other people to calibrate how confident they are in the data. So a few things uh, to think about as you're uh, pulling together this uh, performance box score and, and trying to answer the question of how well a company's done in creating and capturing economic value. So first of all, there's no silver bullet metric of performance, right? There's no one best metric that, you know, one size fits all best metric to measure performance in all situations. Uh, even cash flow, which is the ultimate uh, measure of uh, performance, uh, you know, past cash flow isn't always a great indicator of future cash flow. We saw that in the Tesla case, right? Uh, historically, uh, um, Tesla had uh, generated a lot of negative cash flow, but things seemed to be turning around. And clearly, there were some investors who thought that those cash flows would be much, much larger in the future. So even cash flow, critical as it is, uh, is, is not a silver bullet. You need to use multiple metrics as a result. Uh, so that's why we triangulate, right? We try to come at performance through a couple of different measures in order to get a picture in the round of how, how well the company is performing. 
Uh, we also want to use different types of metrics. So triangulation isn't return on investment, return on assets, return on total assets, return on uh, uh, capital employed, return on equity, you know, all accounting based ratio uh, um, metrics. I mean, they're all good, don't get me wrong, but uh, the marginal return of the fourth or fifth uh, accounting based uh, return metric is pretty low, right? So it's, it's better when you're trying to assess the performance of a company to come at it from different angles. So, okay, yep, we'll take some historical accounting based uh, metrics. We'll look at revenue growth, terrific. If they're publicly traded companies, we'll look at uh, market performance, total shareholder return returns, Tobin's Q, we might look at uh, customer economics. So the idea is use different types of metrics rather than several of the same type of metrics to, uh, to assess performance. And uh, finally, uh, or not finally, explore anomalies. So sometimes you'll, you know, you pull together a box score and everything looks like, you know, it's all, all going uh, carnival's way. And then you see this one thing where Royal Caribbean is doing uh, better. That's a clue to dig deeper. Okay, it may be the data isn't credible, it may be the analysis was wrong, or it may be, as is often the case, the company does well on certain measures of performance and less well on others. And understanding why that is can often provide deeper insight as to uh, the drivers of performance. Uh, and now we are at finally, uh, you want to always calibrate your confidence based on data quality. Okay, so not all data is created equal. We're, we live in a world awash with data, but not all of it is high quality data. And so you have to always be thinking about what is the quality of data that went into this analysis. And based on that, how heavily do I weigh it when I'm trying to estimate uh, overall corporate performance?